All right, hello again, everybody. Welcome back to Airbus 320 Tech Talk. What do all those buttons do? Thank you again so much for joining me. Topic of today's discussion is going to be the EWD, or the engine and warning display. Uh, but before we get into the talk today, uh, as always, if you like what you're hearing and seeing, please go ahead and hit the like button, hit subscribe, hit the notification bell for me. It just helps me out keeping this channel uh, moving forward and hopefully uh, fun, engaging, and exciting for everybody, myself included. So we'll go ahead and jump into the topic of discussion I've got for you today. And as I said, the, the EWD, um, that of course is the uh, one of the big screens that we've got up in the flight deck here, the, the one in the... Um, in the middle, of course, between the captain and the first officer, it's the one on the top side that we're going to be focusing on today. So, before I talk about you know this this screen, you know a little bit more in depth, I'll, I'll just kind of gloss over what everything means on there uh, when I kind of wrap things up today. But I wanted to first start out and show just one of the other slides that I'd pulled out of the FCOM, and that is um, one of the first things that is it's certainly necessary to make mention of at this point is um, the concept of this the ECAM or the Electronic Centralized Aircraft Monitoring System on the airplane. So you've probably heard this term um, at various times, you know, when you've talked about Airbuses or learned about Airbuses. Um, but just wanted to, to throw a little bit more light on that one or tell you just a little bit more about um, that system itself. Um, first of all, you know, what is it? I mean, it's just there exactly as the name implies. I mean, the Airbus is very advanced. It's very good at keeping track of everything that's going on with, with the airplane mechanically at all points in time. And of course, you know, along with that, uh, it has a means of bringing these things to your attention. Um, and, and a large part to build on part of, or on top of that, excuse me, um, is the Airbus's ability to help you troubleshoot these issues. And that's, I've got to say, you know, one of the, the shining, uh, you know, high or positive points about the Airbus itself, just the way it's designed, is that um, I think it is kind of uh, unique, you know, as compared to other planes that I've got to learn and operate uh, before, just as how, how efficient they've kind of made your job as the pilot, you know, once again, when something goes wrong, they just kind of put everything right in front of your face. And like I said, they even give you a checklist of what items to, to do at, at what point in time, you know, when you are dealing with some sort of issue. So as I said, you know, that, that ECAM term, um, just kind of used, uh, you know, sometimes let's say in, in an umbrella type of statement, we'll talk about, you know, doing the ECAM, you know, at points in time, we talk about, you know, actually taking these troubleshooting steps that I, I mentioned just a moment ago there before, but bringing it back in full circle, um, I just wanted to make mention of the fact that, you know, the, the ECAM actually has two screens that it uses to feed us data. Um, it's actually using that top screen as well as the bottom screen. Now on the top screen, you know, like I said, what we're going to talk about today uh, this graphic just kind of spells it out a little bit more, my point here that I'm just trying to make. But, you know, the, the top three quarters of that screen is just dedicated to um, the engine parameters specifically and a few other systems that, you know, they chose to uh, to include in that screen that they thought were, were important for us. And then, of course, you know, below that we have that this little breakdown um, of these areas here that we're used to seeing. And um, on the left-hand side, I mean, this all this is really telling us is just, you know, in general, you know, the things that we're going to see on the left-hand side of the screen, we're always going to see our memos. So we have these, these takeoff and landing memos that just, uh, their, their configuration uh, checks essentially to make sure that we've got everything, you know, set up properly on the airplane before we either take off or before we land. Uh, so those memos will pl display on the left-hand side there. Uh, but you can see they've kind of uh, broken it up that you can see on both sides, uh, you know, pieces of information that have to do with the, the master warnings and cautions that might come up and be displayed. And, you know, there's just, you know, a few little extra pieces of data that they've, they've broken down. You know, you can read these yourself, you know, as you're, as you're watching the, the slide here. But just uh, some high-level stuff to throw at you. And, of course, on the bottom screen, and we're, we're going to touch on this, you know, the next... Um, you know, segments of videos that I'm going to make here is, you know, the status displays down there. So up top, you know, we, we can kind of, you know, say that, okay, we get a little bit of troubleshooting data and we get some, some basic uh, levels of data about, you know, in some cases, you know, what are, what systems are affected by this failure, let's say, that, that might be displaying here. And then we would go down to the status screen if we want to get more detail about uh, just a little bit more about how our airplane is affected, you know, by, you know, such and such failures that might have occurred or, or whatever problem is being thrown our way. So, uh, a little bit about that. Um, I can bring up another slide too, just just while we're talking about this. To, I wanted to show you a little bit about what it looks like, you know, when the airplane has a failure. And uh, once again, I'll, I'll pull up this awesome Airbus black and white graphic, which uh, for those of you that have watched my videos before, you know how much I like to make fun of Airbus for 
you know, selling you a really expensive airplane and just giving you these, these highly simple uh, non-color coded graphics, which would be really useful, especially in a case like this where we're talking about the breakdown between, you know, the different color coding that is actually applied, you know, by the airplane. We have various, you know, failures of various systems that, uh, you know, it gets kind of into depth here, but, you know, things that are a little bit more serious versus things that are not so much, things that are advisories, all that kind of stuff. There is a color coding that goes along with this, but um, all that I wanted to show you that you know on this this slide here, the reason why I bring it up is just you know like I said to kind of show you this this business about you know when a failure pops up, it presents you data about an action step that you can take to rectify that that situation wherever it is. So in this case here, we've we've had a couple failures being displayed. So we've got a, a hydraulic uh, blue reservoir overheat, so it's telling you to turn the blue electric pump to the opposition. Uh, another thing that's happened is the, there's been a failure in the, the uh, wing NAI system. The left-hand uh, valve is still open, so it tells you to take you know, such and such steps to reconfigure the airplane to you know, get you into safe condition, and you know, you're, you're going to at that point press on or, or find somewhere to land if it's a serious enough failure or whatever the case might be. So uh, just like I said, some, some basic stuff that I wanted to show you about what possible things you might see in that bottom section of the EWD screen there. So we'll come back and take a look at just the, the first photo that I, I took here. This was just, uh, we, were, we were flying down to Tucson today, so I snapped a picture when we were up at cruise. But uh, just to go line by line, I wanted to tell you about you know, what each of the, the indications are here that we see at this point in time. So once again, we're up at altitude, plane just kind of cruising along. So we have the uh, first thing on the top here, the CLB. That just means that the thrust system has the, um, the detent set to the climb mode. So that's kind of the, the top of the, the N1 limit in our case here. That's actually... Uh, indicated by this little orange tick mark if we kind of zoom in and uh, and look at that and it actually tells you here that what that percentage is exactly so 86.5 in our case here is, is where that little orange tick mark is sitting at so once again the the n1 limit and the the thrust mode that the airplane is in uh, at present um, and while I'm there, I will make mention of it really quickly. These little blue donuts that you see on top here, that's the thrust lever angle or the thrust lever position. And we'll get into this, you know, much deeper when we talk about the actual thrust levers when we get there. But as you know, the, the thrust levers on the Airbus, they actually don't move. Um, you know, we, we, we just put the thrust levers up into a given detent and then the airplane does its own thing to kind of um, make changes to the N1 in this case. You know, wh whatever, you know, condition we're, we're in or whatever we're asking the airplane to do, it, it, it does it on its own. Uh, so, you know, along with that being said, you know, the, the top line here, we're just seeing the N1 indications for both the engines. So, you know, right now we're at 81% on the left and right engines. Uh, right below there is the EGT or the exhaust gas temperature in degrees Celsius. So right now, you know, just, just some general information to, to show us about, you know, where the airplane is operating and its general range of temperatures. Um, you know, right now, you know, 548 and 552 respectively. And, and this is kind of interesting too. I mean, it's, it's actually very rare that you would see uh, an airplane with two engines that have identical EGTs at all, you know, realms of flight. And, you know, one of the reasons why this is like this is because actually the, the, the engines on the planes are all kind of going through their own lifetime on their own different, you know, pace, let's say, or, or different like point in hours, you know, between overhauls and, you know, the age of the engine, all this kind of stuff. So they, they actually all kind of perform like somewhat ever so slightly different. It's kind of interesting. And you can kind of see that as evidenced here, you know, there is some slight variation in temperatures, which kind of makes sense. Uh, below there is the N2 speed. Um, so once again, you know, just the, the core uh, speed, let's say, of the, the inner, you know, uh, fans in the engine there, or the inner um, vanes and what have you that are spinning around. So the N2 speed. Uh, below there is the fuel flow in pounds per hour. So left and right hand side, respectively, of course, you know, 2,280 pounds on the left, 2,280 pounds on the right. And then below there, we just have a, an indication for the FOB or the fuel on board. So that's the total fuel and all the tanks that we have on board the aircraft in pounds. And then this guy right here, um, right now, because everything's stowed, it's kind of, uh, you know, the, everything's retracted essentially. So this is the slat and flap indicator. And of course, you would see if we were to, you know, go out there and manipulate the, the slats and the flaps, you would see those little dots, you know, kind of grow out of there. And, you know, I, I think... Most of you guys are probably familiar with that if you've, um, you know, looked at other, you know, Airbus photos or you've, you've flight simmed Airbus or what, what have you. So, 
Uh, and then, like I said, you know, just the, the bottom area here, you know, different things that we might see um, most of the time in our, our normal, you know, uh, phases of flight, um, just as you would expect, if everything is like configured as it should be, you know, for that, you know, the airplane knows where it's at at all points in times. I mean, it's just going to, everything's going to be out and everything's going to be dark, but you know, there are periods of time where maybe we're doing something a little bit abnormal. So let's say, for example, we turn the seatbelt sign on. Well, you know, there's, there's actually an advisory message that will pop up and tell us that. Or let's say we turn the engine and AI on, there's an advisory message that will pop us and, up and kind of tell us that as well. So I mean, there's just a whole different um, slew of pieces of information that could be displayed down there. And, of course, I, I can't really go through, like, every single thing that you're going to see down there uh, in the confines of this, this little discussion here today. But that's just kind of the general stuff that I wanted to tell you guys about. Um, let me know if you have some questions about this screen in particular. So I uh, hope you guys are having a wonderful day. Thank you so much for tuning in, and uh, we'll talk to you again real soon. Bye-bye.